Hi, I'm Kurt Ross, president of Grayling Industries, headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Here at Grayling, we're proud of our position of leadership in the asbestos abatement industry and the role played by our Avail glove bags. We have been honored by OSHA with the selection of our glove bags as the model for the new regulations and standards for all glove bags utilized in the abatement of asbestos pipe insulation. Naturally, as the world's leading manufacturer of glove bags, we're pleased with their decision to adopt and endorse glove bagging as a standalone abatement method. Our Avail glove bags have been used to remove over 30 million feet of pipe insulation, and with that kind of track record, our input played a major role in establishing these new standards. In this tradition of leadership, Grayling Industries presents the Glove Bag Workshop, a step-by-step -step instructional guide. Grayling Industries is committed to excellence in design, manufacturing, customer service, and education in the proper use and safety of all of our products. All of us at Grayling Industries thank you for your continued trust. Welcome to the Glove Bag Workshop, a step-by-step -step instructional guide presented by Grayling Industries makers of the Avail glove bag system. We all know the serious health concerns surrounding asbestos exposure, especially the fine airborne particles that can arise when asbestos is disturbed, as in any removal process. This is why the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has developed strict standards, as well as many other state and local regulatory agencies. Recently, OSHA has endorsed the use of glove bags as an accepted standalone method of asbestos removal, particularly on long runs of pipe. This is a significant development and demands close study, since the most common asbestos application is on pipe insulation, constituting literally millions of miles running through our factories, schools, homes, and other buildings. It is the purpose of this video to instruct you on all phases of glove bags, their selection, safety equipment and precautions, site preparation, equipment and tools, installation and removal, cleanup and decontamination, as they apply to the OSHA standards as of October 1994. Of course, in addition to our precautions, always consult all current applicable federal, state, and local regulations and procedures. Ultimately, it is your responsibility to become familiar with the processes and safety precautions, exercising good judgment at all times. Although not applicable in every case, there are many advantages to using glove bags over walk-in enclosures. Many times it can be a faster, more efficient method, saving time, money, and reducing exposure risks. So let's begin our glove bag workshop. This is a glove bag. Glove bags are portable, sealed, disposable work chambers that attach directly to pipes. They act as mini containment areas and provide a barrier that totally isolates workers from asbestos particles during abatement. Glove bags are now considered by OSHA as the industry standard for removing asbestos from pipes. OSHA also endorses glove bags for all classes of asbestos disturbance, from class one, large scale abatement, to class three maintenance activities. The glove bag consists of a clear polyethylene containment bag which serves as the workspace, a glove and sleeve assembly, a tool pouch, and entry ports for a water wand and HEPA vacuum. This is an Avail extended run glove bag manufactured by Grayling Industries. Glove bags are available in a variety of shapes and sizes, so it's easy to find a configuration that matches the needs of virtually any project. Standard single glove bags are designed to fit over short lengths of horizontal pipe and they're well suited to maintenance activities such as gasket replacement, valve repair, or small scale abatement. OSHA now prohibits the practice of sliding a single glove bag down long runs of pipe. This has prompted specifically designed glove bags for large scale abatement. Avail extended run glove bags are designed for large scale abatement or longer sections of pipe. They consist of multiple chambers, each of which is fully equipped with the features of a standard glove bag. Extended run glove bags can increase productivity and safety because they eliminate multiple bag setup time and reduce fiber release and are ideal when the primary activity is abatement. Avail extended run glove bags come in rolls of up to 25 chambers. Depending upon the length of the pipe to be treated, users can cut off as many chambers as necessary to complete the job. 
A full roll of extended run glove bags can cover more than 100 feet of pipe. Most of our demonstrations will use extended run glove bags. However, the tools, supplies, and safety precautions and the step-by-step -step procedures we will show for extended run glove bagging are easily adapted for all other glove bagging configurations. Glove bags are also available to fit vertical, T-sections, elbows, and large diameter pipes. Well-designed glove bags are equipped with a number of features designed to enhance productivity and protect workers. Look for the following when selecting a glove bag. Pre-cut openings on the top, these eliminate the time-consuming and cumbersome process of splitting the ends and tape reinforcement prior to attaching the glove bag. Fitted collars allow quick, secure attachment to pipes. Fitted collars speed up installation, strengthen attachment points, and eliminate bunching that can trap debris. Look for a bag constructed of clear, strong polyethylene, blended specifically for glove bags. The clearer, the better like this Aveo glove bag. OSHA requires glove bag material to be at least six mils thick. All Aveo glove bags are standard in six mils and available special order in 10 mils. Seamless bottoms are essential. The bottom of a glove bag receives the most pressure. A bag with seams may break open under a heavy load. OSHA requires that glove bags be of seamless bottom construction, an airtight seal where the glove sleeve assembly joins together. Sewn seams allow fibers to escape, increasing the risk of contamination. This demonstration shows the amount of leakage that can occur with a sewn assembly when filled with water versus the glued avail glove sleeve. Entry ports that allow quick fiber tight attachment of the vacuum and water wand. The positioning of the glove is critical for work comfort. Weight of debris doesn't rest on the worker's arms. To review what we've learned, when selecting glove bags, look for pre-cut edges or tops, fitted collars, custom polyethylene construction, seamless bottoms, an airtight glove sleeve assembly, fiber-tight entry ports, and proper glove sleeve position. Once you have selected the proper glove bag, you must provide yourself with the equipment and supplies needed for glove bagging. Protecting yourself from the dangers of asbestos fibers is the most important step in glove bagging. OSHA requires every worker at the asbestos abatement site to be equipped with the following personal protective gear. Disposable polypropylene coveralls with a built-in hood. Coveralls protect your clothing, skin, and hair from collecting asbestos fibers. Latex pullover work boots to keep contaminants off your street shoes. Work gloves for all tasks outside of the glove bag. A hard hat, eye protection, and a high-efficiency particulate air or HEPA-filtered respirator. Glove bags contain the asbestos fibers released during abatement. However, as added protection, OSHA requires asbestos workers to wear a HEPA-filtered respirator, which filters out 99.997% of asbestos particles as small as 0.3 microns in size. Different types of respirators are required depending upon the exposure levels you will encounter. Consult with a qualified hygienist to determine what type of protection factor is needed. You'll also need the following supplies and tools for glove bagging. High quality duct tape, which is used to seal the bag to the pipe and for many other functions. Tape strength is very important because the bag endures a significant amount of stress under use. A smoke test kit to check the glove bag for leaks. Warning signs and barricade tape to warn passers-by that an asbestos danger is present and to keep them at safe distance from the removal site. Surfactant, which enables water to saturate asbestos-containing insulation and reduces the amount of airborne particles. Encapsulant, which locks down fibers that remain on the pipe after abatement. A product is available that combines surfactant and encapsulant. A pump-up type garden sprayer to apply the surfactant and encapsulant. A vacuum cleaner equipped with a HEPA filter to safely remove contaminated air from the glove bag. A roll of six mil clear polyethylene to use as a drop cloth under the pipe. It can also be used to wrap a pipe whose insulation is damaged or very brittle. This prevents fibers from being released into the air during glove bag installation. Asbestos disposal bags are needed to remove the contaminated glove bags and coveralls. 
These bags should be well marked to identify the asbestos hazard and must comply with all local, state, and federal regulations. Personal air sampling pumps. OSHA requires that the air and a worker's personal breathing zone, as well as room air, be tested at regular intervals during asbestos abatement. The sampling pumps are typically supplied and operated by an industrial hygienist who contracts independently with the building owner. For work inside the glove bag, you'll need 10 snips and pliers to cut the metal jacketing or wires that are found in most pipes. Flexi wire saws to cut through the insulation. Retractable utility knives to cut the cloth jacketing. A tape measure to calculate the number of glove bags that you're going to need. Scrub brushes and scrapers to thoroughly clean the pipe. Once you have all the required supplies and tools, you're ready to prepare the job site for glove bagging. When you arrive at the job site, make sure you have all the needed equipment and supplies on hand. Use a checklist if necessary. After taking an inventory of your supplies, put on your personal protective gear, beginning with your coveralls. Use duct tape to secure the ends of the sleeves to your wrists. Put on your boots, gloves, and respirator. Whichever type of respirator you use, make sure to wear it under the hood of your coveralls to ensure a snug fit. Shut off HVAC or ventilation fans. Tag and lock out access to control panels. Next, mark off the regulated area with barricade tape, leaving a wide margin around the abatement area. If there are doors or windows accessing the regulated area, you must set up critical barriers. And post asbestos warning signs prominently. These precautions are required by OSHA. In some cases, it will be necessary to construct a decon facility adjacent to the regulated area. The decon consists of an equipment room, shower, and clean room. Roll out the polyethylene sheeting and position an adequate length under the pipe as a drop cloth. Vacuum the pipe with the HEPA vacuum cleaner to remove any asbestos dust. Next, measure the length of pipe to be treated. To determine the number of chambers to cut from the roll, consult the chart on the back of the avail brochure. If the insulation is extremely friable, that is, if it crumbles easily, wrap the pipe with a layer of polyethylene sheeting and wrap the area of the pipe adjacent to the regulated area with two layers of 6 mil poly to prevent release of fibers during the project. Secure it by wrapping it with duct tape in a candy stripe pattern. Unroll the appropriate length of Avail extended run glove bags. It is critical to use the proper number. It may appear that you have too many. However, slack is required in the glove bag to facilitate the twisting off of the debris chambers. Using a utility knife, cut the glove bag at the collar that separates the chambers. Place the required tools in the tool pouch of the chamber or chambers where the work will begin. One of the advantages of Avail extended run glove bags is that multiple chambers can be used simultaneously. Setup time efficiency is increased due to the elimination of repetitive tasks. One large bag set up versus multiple single bags could save you up to 40% of labor. However, for every glove bag operation, OSHA requires two workers on hand to assist and monitor safety. The next step is to install the glove bag. Take each end of the bag and lift it to the pipe. Move along the glove bag and pull the opening around the pipe. Overlap the ends, but don't pull them taut. Tack the bag in place with small pieces of duct tape. Beginning with the first chamber in the glove bag run, lay the seam flat and seal the bag opening from one end to the other with duct tape. Duct tape should not come in contact with pipe insulation during this step. Leave openings where the pipe hangers are located. Return to the start of the run. Gather the open collar from around the pipe and seal it tightly to the pipe with several layers of duct tape. Repeat the procedure at the far end of the glove bag. Attach the end according to the maximum work area. There should be some slack. This extra space will be important when removing glove bag chambers. Then seal the collar to the pipe with several layers of duct tape. Modify the glove bag where pipe hangers occur by cutting with a utility knife and carefully sealing with duct tape. 
Loosely support the collars between chambers using either lengths of duct tape or straps. Leave room enough to reach the insulation that runs through the collars. Now test the glove bag for integrity using the smoke test kit. First tightly cinch off the collar in the first compartment using the strap or duct tape. Insert the smoke generator through one of the entry ports and introduce just enough smoke to fill the chamber. Remove the smoke generator and seal the entry port with duct tape. Gently squeeze the bag and watch or listen for escaping smoke. Leaks usually occur in tape sections. Seal any leaks with duct tape and uncinch the collar. Repeat the procedure for each glove bag chamber before entering. Should the glove bag become punctured during any part of the asbestos removal, quickly repair it with duct tape. Fill the sprayer with a surfactant. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for details on mixing and using the surfactant. Insert the HEPA vacuum and wetting wand of the pump sprayer through the entry ports. Seal each of the entry port socks with duct tape. You are now ready to remove the insulation. Put your hands and arms into the first glove sleeve assembly. Generously wet the insulation with surfactant. Using 10 snips, cut any banding or wires that hold the jacketing in place. Carefully remove the jacketing, especially if it's made of metal. The sharp edges can cut the glove bag. Fold the jacketing inward so no sharp edges are exposed. Some contractors insert burlap rice bags to hold the jacketing material and protect the glove bag. Gently lower the jacketing to the bottom of the bag. Wet down the insulation again with surfactant. It is important to keep the insulation wet to decrease the amount of asbestos particles released into the air. If the insulation is firmly attached to the pipe, it may be necessary to use a flexi-wire saw to cut through the insulation. Lift the insulation off the pipe and lower it to the bottom of the bag. Be sure to remove the insulation that extends into the collar. Typically, insulation attaches to pipes in semicircular segments. Insulation is typically installed in three-foot sections. So, if you're careful to find the seam, you can easily remove the insulation intact. Unless the insulation is severely deteriorated or friable, these segments usually come off easily. One of the benefits of extended run glove bagging is the ability to work a continuous piece of pipe, reaching between chambers. Thoroughly scrape or chip off the remaining asbestos using a scraper. Once the insulation has been removed, scrub the pipe clean using the brush and surfactant. Fill the pump sprayer with encapsulant and spray a generous coating of it onto the pipe and inside the glove bag. This locks down any residual asbestos fibers. Now pass the tools into the next work chamber. The next step is to seal off the contaminated chamber. Tightly wrap the collar around the uninsulated section of pipe using duct tape or strap. Activate the HEPA vacuum evacuating the air from the glove bag. When empty, Twist off the contaminated chamber just below the pipe and tightly wrap the twisted section with duct tape. Deactivate the vacuum and cut the chamber away from the pipe. Immediately place the contaminated chamber into a properly marked asbestos disposal bag. You're now ready to move on to the next chamber and repeat the process. Once you've finished work in the final chamber of the extended run glove bag, you have to remove the tools. Grasp them with one of the glove sleeve assemblies and pull the sleeve inside out. Twist the sleeve above the tools. Wrap the twisted area securely with duct tape. Cut the center of the taped area and remove the tools. Then remove the last chamber of the glove bag using the previously described procedures. After the last chamber of the extended run glove bag has been taken down and safely disposed of, proceed with cleanup and decontamination. Fold the drop cloth inward and place it in an asbestos disposal bag. Be careful not to spill any material that may have fallen during the removal process. Seal up all asbestos disposal bags and discard them in accordance with local, state, and federal regulations. If a decontamination unit has been set up, follow all applicable procedures. Vacuum and clean the area for final clearance. While still wearing your respirator, remove your coveralls, boots, and gloves. 
Place them in an asbestos waste bag and dispose of it properly. Finally, remove the barricade tape and warning signs. The job is now complete. Now let's talk to several experts and see how these Avail glove bags have actually performed in real world situations. First, let's hear from the field. I'm Tony Smith, a professional asbestos abatement contractor with over 10 years experience in glove bag operations. Every day, we handle hundreds of feet of pipe insulation removal throughout the southeast. Glove bags are one of my most crucial tools 